I have another question for you. Ooh, I'm looking forward to having my commentary on this one. Take any idea you are 100% sure of. Perhaps that gold will rise over the next five years. Perhaps that God exists. Perhaps that your dentist is overcharging you. Whatever the belief, write it down in one sentence. Do you believe yourself? Morning, everybody. It is raining here in Sydney, but that doesn't hold us back from having a really amazing day. We are still reading The Art of Thinking Clearly, which is a really great book. Of course, the plan was to read Rich Dad Poor Dad, but I only have the Chinese copy. And I know that you don't speak Chinese. I'm learning Chinese with this uh, children's book, but I'm definitely not ready to read Rich Dad Poor Dad 2 in Chinese. And I know that you don't speak Chinese, so we'll just keep it to. The Art of Thinking Clearly, which is a really amazing book. Okay, Mladen is joining on the Zoom as well. And Generation Global is saying, hello, I'm doing very well. It's raining a little bit, but it is still all good. Okay, we're up to chapter 67. And this one is called Be Your Own Heretic. Introspection Illusion. Okay, let's get into it, because I know that you all have goals and things to do before the weekend hits, and hopefully you've got some really amazing plans for the weekend. Let's get into it. Bruce is in the vitamin business. His father founded the company when supplements were not yet a lifestyle product. A doctor had to prescribe them. When Bruce took over the operation in early 1990s, demand skyrocketed. Bruce seized the opportunity with both hands and took out huge loans to expand production. Today, he's one of the most successful people in the business and president of a national association of vitamin manufacturers. Since childhood, hardly a day has passed without him swallowing at least three multivitamins. A journalist once asked him if they do anything. He replied, I'm sure of it. Do you believe him? I have another question for you. Oh, I'm looking forward to having my commentary on this one. Take any idea you are 100% sure of. Perhaps that gold will rise over the next five years. Perhaps that God exists. Perhaps that your dentist is overcharging you. Whatever the belief, write it down in one sentence. Do you believe yourself? I bet you consider your conviction more valid than Bruce's, right? Here's why. Yours is an internal observation, whereas Bruce's is external. Crudely put, you can peek into your own soul, but not into his. In Bruce's case, you might think, come on, it's obviously in his interest to believe that vitamins are beneficial. After all, his wealth and social status depend on the success of the company. He has to maintain a family tradition. All his life is gulped down pills, so he will never admit that it was a waste of time. For you, however, it's a different story. You have searched deep inside. You are, uh, inside. You are completely impartial. Or are you? But how pure and honest is internal reflection? The Swedish psychologist Petar Johansson mm -hmm allowed test subjects to glimpse two portrait photos of random people and choose which face was more attractive. Then he showed them the preferred photo up close and asked them to describe the most attractive features. However, with the slate of hand, he switched the pictures. Most participants failed to realize and proceeded to justify in detail why they favored the image. The results of the study, introspection, is not reliable. When we soul search, we contrive the findings. The belief that reflection leads to truth or accuracy is called the introspection illusion. This is more than uh, sophistry. Because we are so confident of our beliefs, we experience three reactions when someone fails to share our views. Response one, assume assumption of ignorance. The other party clearly lacks the necessary information. If he knew what you know, he would be of the same opinion. Political activists think this way. They believe they can win others over through enlightenment. Reaction two, assumption of idiocy. The other person has the necessary information, but his mind is underdeveloped. He cannot draw the obvious conclusions. In other words, he's a moron. This reaction is particularly popular with bureaucrats who want to protect stupid consumers from themselves. Response three, assumption of malice. Your counterpart has the necessary information. He even understands the debate, but he is deliberately confrontational. He has evil intentions. This is how many religious leaders and followers treat disbelievers. If they don't agree, they must be servants of the devil. In conclusion, nothing is more convincing than your own beliefs. We believe that introspection unearths genuine self-knowledge. 
Unfortunately, introspection is, in large part, fabrication posing two dangers. First, the introspection illusion creates inaccurate predictions of future mental states. Trust your internal observations too much and too long, and you might be in for a very rude awakening. Second, we believe that our introspections are more reliable than those of others, which creates an illusion of superiority. Remedy, be all the more critical with yourself. Regard your internal observations with the same skepticism as claims, uh, claims from some random person. Become your own toughest critic. Okay, this is an interesting chapter because everybody is always going to have their own particular opinion and everybody's opinion is going to be different. And yes, people are going to look at others and say they are wrong, they are not paying attention to what I know, they are either ignorant or they are pretending to be ignorant or all of these different kinds of things. And yes, what we believe is going to be rooted in ourselves. And it's important that we believe what we believe, because otherwise, what is the justification mm -hmm. for our life or anything in that sense? However, here's the interesting thing. If we look at now and then we look 300 years into the past, we look and we say everybody was a bit of an idiot because now we know X, Y and Z. And yet we are all looking at everything from this perspective of now. And we could all be wrong in 300 years' time. And so to make somebody else wrong now is a bit of an interesting conundrum. And so rather than looking at it from the point of view of the here and now, I think it would be better to have a look at it from the point of view of in 300 years. And I could be wrong. The other person could be wrong. We don't really know what is truth and what is not truth. The truth only ever comes out years later. It is such a fascinating thing to think about. Um, there are a lot of studies that will show that vitamins are extremely good. There are also studies that show that the studies are paid for by the vitamin companies so that the studies will come out with certain um, answers. Whether you believe that or not is completely up to you, and I don't mind. And this is, I think, the most important part of this chapter, the fact that you can have your opinion. You can allow somebody else to have their opinion, and you can let the other person know what your opinion is and why. And still allow that person to, to hold on to their opinion or change their opinion and allow them that freedom. I was watching a movie a couple of days ago. And in this movie, it was a German World War II movie. And there's a German soldier and he runs a concentration camp. And he likes shooting Jewish people just randomly. And he likes killing Jewish people and he likes belittling Jewish people. And somebody else, well, it was actually Schindler's List. And... Schindler actually comes up to him and says, look, real power is not shooting the Jewish person and allowing your anger on, onto them, but it is allowing them to continue living. So you tell them that they've done something wrong or that you're not happy with the fact that they're working so fast, but pardoning them is the greatest power. And he does it a few times and he does feel that power, but he just has a bloodthirst and he just keeps killing after he's done this a few times. So this is what I think could be taken away. Remember that in 300 years' time, everybody then is going to look at us and go, oh my goodness me, what on earth were they all thinking? Just like we now look at people from 300 years ago, and we know they, or yeah, almost 300 years ago now, they used to use petrol in their hair to get rid of lice. Now, petrol is obviously not really a great thing to put into your hair. They used to bloodlet. They used to do all of these really crazy things. And at that time, there were people who said, this is a great technique. There were people who said, this is a little bit absurd. But the majority would say, this is a great technique. This is what the doctors tell us. This is what is going to save us. And yet that is not always the case. And Tom says he loves his topic. So great to have you here. So take a step into the future and have a think about the fact that everything could be completely wrong. Have your opinion. Let somebody else have their opinion. Feel free to tell them what your opinion is and see if you can change their mind. But don't force them to change their mind. The power really lies in allowing others to have their opinions and allowing them their freedom so that they also give you your freedom so that you can do what you want to as well. So that was chapter 67, Introspection Illusion. Tomorrow, or not, not tomorrow, today is Friday. On Monday, we're going to be reading chapter 68, Why You Should uh, Set Fire to Your Ships. The inability to close doors. So, 
If you'd like to watch more of these episodes, they are up on YouTube. I've read uh, 67 or six, yeah, 67 chapters so far. Um, the Passive Cash Flow Club is where you can find us. And if you'd like to see what I'm up to and other things that I do, and if you'd like to reach out and DM, then feel free to go to Instagram and you can find me there at um, business underscore team underscore six underscore official. And then I am very much looking forward to uh, meeting you there. Get in touch, leave a comment, leave a comment on the videos uh, from before. And yeah, have an amazing weekend. Remember that reading is such a powerful thing and that you are able to uh, skip the reading and I'll do it for you. And I'll even give you commentary and ideas to help you start your day in a really, really great way. So have a great weekend. I'll see you all on Monday and be good till then.